Well, everyone, welcome back to Palm Tree Life, and we're in this beginner's guide for Ghana, just learning a little bit about CK3, and uh, I wanted to go into warfare, raiding, that sort of thing with this episode, so I would remind you, coming off of the last episode, I did go into my court, I did marry off everyone, uh, some are have a high likelihood of having children, some do not, uh, that's just how it is. Uh, but it will create more uh, Seninke culture people. Um, it will also create more opportunities for us to have really good vassals. It will give us more opportunity to have really good counselors. Uh, and I would even say this is just a reminder to go into your vassals every once in a while and see if they have children. And then if they have children, offer to educate them because it will build a relationship with the vassal. It will build a relationship with the child. It will make things move along um, and keep your kingdom a little bit uh, friendlier, especially in the tribal government. So that's just something to, to think through moving forward. But let's talk about some warfare and raiding. Let's get into that. So you've seen that. Now let's quickly run through this military. You've got the tabs here. This is your army. These are the mercenaries you can hire for a certain amount of money. And this is holy orders, which will come in feudal areas. Okay. Your levies is your basic troop type. So that's just the basic, like, lightly trained or untrained army personnel. That's how many you have. Every army is going to made up, be made up probably mostly of levies. Your champions are your prowess guys. So, once again, this guy is probably worth paying three to get because he's going to be your second best knight. This guy going to be your third best knight and you're going to get to have eight so your top eight now you can choose if there's somebody you'd just like to go ahead and give a chance to kill off like he's got one prowess he doesn't like me he's a powerful vassal that isn't doing anything although i probably need to put him i probably need to put him in intrigue honestly over this guy yeah we need to do that let's do that But as you can see, if I if I there's somebody you don't so three here he doesn't like me, uh, he's a powerful vassal. You can force him to fight, and when you get into fights because he's such a low prowess, it might make uh, it might make him like he might get killed in battle because he's not very good at battle, and that's how you can get rid of somebody. May may sound harsh, but it is something that you can do. Also, if you have a somebody that you really like, that you're like, I cannot lose this person, you can just forbid them from being even being allowed to fight. Uh, and so it keeps them healthy where they, they at least can't be killed in battle. But whatever you want to do there. So that's your champions, your uh, men-at-arms. This is like your well-trained army. And your well-trained army, um, you can increase and decrease in size as a tribal government, you're you're getting charged prestige to get these guys. Okay, so it's costing you prestige to maintain them. Right here, you see prestige, prestige to maintain them, prestige to purchase them. Right here, unraised maintenance, full maintenance. Like when they're raised, it's going to cost you 2.4 a month of prestige. When you switch to feudal, it's money. So you need to remember that it's a big deal. So you, you might have a full men-at-arms army down here because you just have tons of prestige, and then all of a sudden it switched to full money, and you haven't built the things that gives you the money to take care of them. And so you have to be mindful of that when you switch to feudal. The other part is it shows you all the terrain effects that are really important. It tells you we'll get into what these stats mean when we get into warfare. This The Sahel horse, Horseman, you can see... That was a cultural innovation that we f we figured out, okay? At the start of the game, we already had it. We were able to get it. It gives a massive bonus uh, to the lands around us, okay? And, and, and they automatically gave us 300. We didn't have to buy them, okay? So it's a big deal uh, when you're getting into men-at-arms and when you get into the wars around you. Those are the things you want to start looking at. You can also purchase more men-at-arms. It tells you what they counter. So pikemen counter the calver, uh, cavalry. The bowmen counter skirmishers or light footmen. And then the horsemen, they counter archers and heavy infantry. And then light footmen are heavy infantry. Something to be aware of, at least in Africa. This is not true of everywhere in the world. But in Africa, 
There is nothing to counter spearmen at the beginning of the game, most like in almost every culture, because it takes heavy infantry to counter spearmen, and most haven't had the innovation of heavy infantry yet. And so if you do spearmen, pikemen down here at the beginning of the game, there is no counter for that, and so you can really dominate with it. Just something to keep in mind, and especially if the cultures around you have that, you have to know right here, they've done it. You can't counter that spearman, and so you just have to know that's something that's going to, it is a detriment to you attacking. We're big enough that it shouldn't matter, but it is something to keep in mind as you keep going. Now, if you want to raise your, your uh, army, you have to find your rally point, okay? So it's... It, you start the game with this red rally point. Sometimes you can't find it. All right, it's usually at your capital at the beginning of a game, but let's just say you can't find it. Like you're just missing it. You don't see where it's placed. You can always go into your military tab. It'll show you your rally points here, and you just click on it. So no matter where it is, and then if you want to move it, you can just move it wherever you want to, and you just click on the click on the barony you want to move it to. So if you can't find it, just come into your military tab. Click on your rally point and then move it where you want it so then you can find it easier. You can add more rally points as well. Um, so if you want to add, add a rally point, you can just delete it later if you want. But uh, I, I've seen people, sometimes they do it like in each kingdom or each duchy because you can just raise a local army. And so they might want to raise a specific army to a specific kingdom or something, something along that lines. When you do that, it still raises all of your men at arms with it. Uh, but it would just raise the levies in that local location. That's getting way down into the game. And most people will just have one. They'll move it around. They'll raise everybody there. It, that's pretty common. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So that's how you would raise. So if you want to raid instead of like fight a war, you would raise local raiders. You would hit that button. And then you would go raid. Now, what you are raiding is the castles, if, if they have cities or if they have temples, which this does not, but if they do, you could raid the cities and temples as well. But here, we're just gonna be uh, raiding tribal holds. When you're raiding, this loot number, that loot number tells you how much loot you can raid, okay? So we'll get three, if we can successfully raid this location, we will get three ducats, okay? Here with this one, oh, got some birds. Here with this one, we get 15, okay? So you can get 15, but what you need to recognize is if you go for this one, it's more than one county away from your border. So you can go into every county on your border. So there's three, there's three, there's 15, uh, there's 15. So any county on your border, you can raid without penalty. But the second you go into the second layer, it's going to charge. So let's do this. We're going to raise, raise our local raiders. And I would say, we'll talk about commander traits here. And actually, let's just talk about commander traits right now. So as you raise your army, this shows your advantage. So my advantage is actually as, as good as the best commander that I have, which is martial skill 14. So you you enter into a battle with 14 advantage, and we'll explain that when we actually fight someone. Mine is the same uh, because if I'm leading my own soldiers, you get a plus 5. So if I was actually a 14, I would be at 19 because I get that plus 5 bonus. But if you're leading your army, you have a chance to die. You just need to remember that. So these are the different modifiers, though, that a commander can have. And every commander that had a... Uh, martial education has one of these modifiers. I don't have one because my education was learning. It wasn't martial. So you can see who has the martial education just by having that. So we've got uh, here, this guy has an advantage in hills, mountains, and wetlands. So if we end up fighting here, this is a dry land, dry land, dry land. Is that floodplains? So it, he's really not going to get a bonus going into that area, but hill, hills, mountain, and wetlands, when you get down into here, you've got floodplains, but then you got hills, hills, hills. Like So when you get down into this hill area, he's a good commander. Okay. Here you got a flexible leader, so enemy defensive advantage is negative 50%. So if 
if an enemy has an advantage on you, like as the die roll, and I'll explain the die roll as we get into war, but as the die roll, if they have, if they would have an advantage of 10, now they only have an advantage of 5, and that's really important. They took You took away a lot of damage opportunity for them because of this flexible leader, okay? So if you have, he's 11 and he's 14, I don't know that that's close enough to put him up there, but if you, like if he was 14 and he's 14 and I'm not going into a terrain, with hills, mountains, and wetlands, I would probably use this guy. But you have to remember, it's the enemy defensive advantage. So if you're on your own territory and the enemy, and you're in a battle, you are the defender, they are the attacker, and so your enemy is not the defense, they are the offense, so you will not get this modifier. You just need to remember that. You have this guy, This is, so each die roll is a D10 roll, and so here, he can't ever get 10, but... He can only ever get six, you know, plus six, but he won't ever go net more than negative four. So if the enemy commander rolls a 10 and he rolls a negative four, it's only 14 instead of like a negative nine and it's 19. So it keeps him closer. Like he doesn't get the big numbers, but it, he doesn't suffer a penalty if he gets a low number. And this is the same guy. Now this guy is who we want for raiding, a reaver. His raid speed is 100%. So if it would normally take like, 16 days to raid a location he can do it in eight and what that allows you to do is to get in and get out quickly especially if you're going into an area where they might have a bigger army than you uh, as good an army as you if you want to get in and out this allows you to get in because once you start raiding you can't leave until you're done raiding it won't let you leave the location until you have successfully raided it and then you leave so it's almost like you get uh, stuck there like you get paused there and so the other the enemy army has a chance to come get you and attack you and and that loot that you would have gotten they can take it away it also this reaver also has a higher opportunity to um has a higher opportunity to get prisoners and honestly when you're raiding you uh, probably get more money from taking prisoners and then ransoming them back uh, you probably get more money from that than you do actually raiding the location. Getting prisoners is a lot of fun. So you can see that. You can look over it. They're pretty self-explanatory. All of, You can just hover over it. It'll tell you what their com commander trait does. And it's pretty self-explanatory. All right. So we are going to choose. Now I'm going to choose my raider. But if another army shows up and I think it's going to be close... I will switch to more of my battle commander here of 14, okay? So you just got to know that. We'll see what happens here. So we're going to go raiding. You click on your army. You right-click right, right -click where you want to go. It, I should show you this too. It does take time to gather your army. So this, I think it said seven days initially. And so it's counted down. We have one day left from here. And then it's going to, okay, we've gathered our entire army. And you can see he's starting to travel. He's gone. And now we've reached that. And now we're, we can hover over here to see how much longer we get. Eight, seven, six, five days, four, three. You can see it. And we are raiding. So now it's going to take that many days. So we've got five days left to raid. Two, one, we have raided. Right here, <clears throat> this little tab here shows us this is how much you've raided. We've, we're carrying three. We can only carry a maximum of 131. So if you had a lot of wealthy areas around you, you might be able to go in and get some. But you have to remember, if you go over 131, you can't carry it, so you're just leaving it behind. This shows you how much attrition is going to happen every month like as you're going around and about and this shows you your supplies as you're out traveling you will lose supplies and if you get too low and your army starts not having supplies it will be a factor in a battle it will actually take a, a certain amount of advantage points away from you because you don't have enough supplies it will also do it if you're uh, liege or if you are in debt you get a modifier because the army's going why are you know basically the army's going why are we fighting he, our, our ruler can't even pay us, uh, and so you get a modifier against you because you're in debt. All right, so let's look at this attrition. So if I right-click into here, you see this red skeleton face, right? And it says, 
move will result in 25 casualties. All right, and so we are gonna have 25 casualties if we go in here. The reason I'm okay with going in here is because I want that 15 loot. Now what you need to remember is it's that county is where I'm getting the attrition. So if I come into this one, it's still one away from my border, and so I wouldn't have to take attrition here, as you can see. Whoop. As you can see, no attrition. But if I went here, see how this is only one away, okay? One away in Gollum, and then here in Namandiru is only one further, but the reason I would have to take two is because I'm traveling through a county that doesn't border me, and then I'm going to a secondary county that doesn't border me. Whereas if I would right click down here, and then if you do shift right click, I only have one now, and if I go into here, it's still one. So do you see that difference? It may be faster to go this way, but then you take a penalty for 25 casualties, 25 casualties, versus here, right click, right click, I only take one hit of that because I didn't go I didn't go the fast route and have to go through two counties that didn't border me. All right, so you can do that all the way through. And where it does get really tricky, let me show you up here in Europe, because it's just something to pay attention to is a place like right here, okay? So sometimes you can go in here and you can raid, and then you're like, oh, so like let's say we were uh, Kingdom of Great Moravia, okay? And we were coming in here to raid, and we raided this one, and we're like, oh, I'm going to go get this one because it's next to me, too. And I, whoop, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and I, so I'm right here, and I click to go here, and it travels through this one and then comes here. And you're like, why am I taking attrition? It's, it borders me. It's because you went through a county that doesn't border you. So you need to pay attention to the borders of the counties, not just the borders of kingdoms. That's why you take attrition. So make sure you pay attention to that. So here, we're just going to go up here. We're going to get our 15. And we, we're going to watch for other armies. If you do hover over another army, it will tell you. Is it neutral? Is it hostile? Is it an enemy? It'll let you know that so you can make sure that they're not coming to get you. It doesn't look like, doesn't look like Silva cares that we're showing up. So here we go. Ten more days. Five more days. All right, now we have it. Now we have 18 total that we're carrying. The second you set foot back on your territory, okay, the second you're back on your territory, it adds this into your income, okay? And it'll give us 18 income into our money and 18 prestige, okay? You get the same amount of prestige as you took money. When we enter back into it. All right. I'm glad this happened. So, despite successfully besieging the settlement of whatever that's called. <laughs> Where is that? So, we got raided. Let me try to get there. Right here. We got raided right here. Okay. And it's saying... Uh, the resulting looting has been isolated and sporadic. Though your vassal has been spared, the Adrian I, your personal domains hungrily. So this guy is raiding us, and it's letting us know that I'm going to spend 35 prestige because he's raiding us. We can do that to other people, too. Like, we have that option to do that as well, where you can... Uh, we didn't get it on this try. But yeah, you can go in. So here he is trying to raid us again. And so we have the option to go attack them if we really want to. So you can see, your raiders bring back 18 ducats, 18 gold, and you get 18 prestige in loot and acclaim. Okay, and so it went in here, and so we got that. Now, what, what I would normally do is disband my army, but we are not going to do that. We can't do that right now because he's right there. So... You, you can't be near a hostile army right there. Cannot disband while an enemy or hostile army is around. So we'll come down here. He's running away too. We'll see if we might just go attack him to show how you attack things. Or what that battle attack looks like. 
All right, so now we're far enough away. It's letting us disband our army. You can see here we lost some guys. So in a month, so as soon as this clicks over to uh, September 1st, we will get six more Sahel horsemen. We will get 58 levies. Actually, we won't. We'll get 16 levies because it'll go to our max, but it's saying we could get 58. I'm going to move our rally point to my capital because, well, I'm actually going to move it up here because we're going to go attack him. We're going to show off how we do this. Now, you can see whoop, you can see from this what this army makeup is, okay? So you see 993 levies. They have five champions. They have some pikemen some archers, some skirmishers, their commander. So if you wanted to see what you could do is he's a 26, so he's an incredible commander. Uh, so we will not have the advantage going in there. Um, and you can see they're well supplied and they've, they do have loot from us. And so if we want to go in there, we got to know we're up for a battle for sure. So let's see if we can add in some extra men at arms. So we know his makeup is uh, bowmen, which our Sahel horsemen counters archers right there. We have we have 300, they have 200. So we have more to counter them uh, than they have. So we will completely counter their archers. So then they have spearmen. And I've already, I think I told you in the last episode, there is no counter for spearmen in, in West Africa right now because you need heavy infantry, and, and most people do not have heavy infantry at the beginning of this game. So there won't be any counters to that. And then they have 200 skirmishers. All right, and so what, what counters skirmishers is bowmen. So we can create we can create two regiments of bowmen to counter his skirmishers, all right? He's going to be able to counter our Sahil horsemen with his spearmen. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to go some bowmen. And then I'm going to add in some pikemen, some spearmen. Now when you see this, you can see it, it lets you start with five, but then you got to wait a month to get ten. Okay, you get ten more. So it would take a f quite a few months, and they've got 12 days left. So we have to make a decision. Do we want to attack them or not? Well, I'm going to wait. See, it's, it lets us know we're being raided. I'm going to wait. And see. Okay, he's going back home. So we're just going to leave that go. He got away with our money. That's just how it is. That's going to happen sometimes. Okay, here's a good, good example. Oh, never mind. Those are those guys. So you've seen raiding. Let's move on to actually conquering a territory. All right, and what, what we're going to conquer, we're just going to make the first one we conquer right here, Dodogu. We're going to go after that. What you want to do is you can uh, left-click on their flag, like whatever country you want to do. You can also come up here and see, okay, I can declare wars. Can I do go Dodogu or Dodogu? Yes, I can. I can get that one. You can just left-click there, but I'm going to show you this route. You right click on the ruler of that, uh, in this case, county. You declare war, and then it'll let you know what you can do. Now, you can't take the, it, he doesn't have a full duchy, but you can't do the full duchy until you have the illustrious up here, until you're illustrious. We got a long way to go to get to illustrious. We're not even distinguished yet. But we, you can do a, a once in a lifetime subjugation. You can do a once in a lifetime invade kingdom. There's a lot you can do with that. But for now, all we can do is conquer a county, and it's going to cost us 50 of our piety. All right, and this is another reason why I went with learning for this character, because we need a lot of uh, piety to attack other locations with our faith. So you can see. Their faith is the same as us. And so if we attack it, we're not using prestige to attack it. We're using piety. Whereas over here, I think Niani, like we'll eventually want to go after Niani. But if we want to attack Niani, it's going to cost us prestige that we don't have currently. Uh, but it would cost us that. And so you just got to be aware of that. We're going to go in. We're going to declare war. 
and then what we should and if you're in pause you can move all this around it's not that big a deal we're just going to go there we should see their army so before you unpause just raise all here and we should see their army show up somewhere in here or not there it is okay so that's their army you can see all this beforehand so like if you wanted to see their makeup they have they also have Sahel horsemen they also have light footmen for skirmishers they do have champions uh, they have levies if you want to see who their best advantage is, it's probably him so he's a 17 he would be commanding his own troops which would be 22 so he's really good but if you really wanted to see like who could his champions be who are those four you can just click on this tab here, Court, and then if you wanted to go down through and really see what their prowess are, the higher the prowess for these males, so like eight, he's probably one of his champions. All right, so this guy. So that's how you can see the quality of the army. All right, so we're going to go in, and we're just going to right-click on this army to go attack them. And when you go attack them, you have to understand that there's going to be a modifier down here that'll give you kind of an idea it'll be plus minus or kind of a neutral it'll it'll show you like a weighted scale that's balanced to just show it's it's a medium fight but it'll show you why so they do have a better army commander which we already knew but we have more soldiers so it's saying there's a potential battle in, in 39 days so let's see if he stays there or if he runs away he's gonna stay there all right, and so we're going to go into battle, and I will explain this as soon as this battle starts. Okay. So the battle has begun. This gives you, if you go in, if this doesn't pop up, so it's more like that, and it doesn't pop up, you can just left-click on it, and it'll show you. So our commander has an advantage martial skill 14 theirs has 22 which we knew because we looked at that beforehand it shows the total amount of troops here and there, what I want you to see is there's four phases to battle here we're in the maneuver phase so this is your preparation for battle but I want you to see this first as soon as you go in things to recognize are where are you fighting we're fighting in the floodplain so our Sahel horsemen okay are these guys they get a modifier where th instead of their damage being 22 it's actually 37 right now and their toughness instead of 16 is 19 right now because we're fighting in an ideal location for that all right very good uh, to be able to attack there that's one thing to notice another thing is <clears throat> the supply limit so the supply can be critical um, if you're trying to defend somewhere and uh, you have a lot of troops, it, but you need to know, can, can that area supply my troops? You can just look in, the, in a specific county tab, and the supply limit is 3575, so I can have up to 3575 troops there. Once I go to 3576, I will start losing my supply because they don't have enough supplies for my troops. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio on that one. Within this battle, though, there's one other thing that you need to see, and that's um, you see movement speed. Movement speed is just if you're trying to catch an army and they're going like around mountains and you're going through floodplains, you'll be able to catch them quicker because you can move faster than them. Uh, or if you're trying to get away and you stay in areas where you can keep moving fast and they try to cut you off by going through areas that are slow, you might be able to get farther away from them. That's just how that works. And then you got combat width here. How the combat width works is, does it show it here? It'll show it in the next phase here but how the combat width works is it takes the total number of your troops so 2342 and the total number of their troops so we have about what just over 3,000 here so and then it'll divide it in half so we'll have about a combat width of about 1500 so all of my troops won't be able to go in all of his troops will be able to go in but even with 1500 I'm still outnumbering him by about 900 but the modifier here with combat width is then it's only 75% of that 1,500. So it's more like 1,200, 1,250 is the actual combat width. So I can have two times more troops in there than he'll have with a 1,200 combat width. That really um, matters specifically with 
Um, if you are a smaller army, but you may be really, like you may have a lot of men of ar men at arms, you just don't have a lot of the levies. Maybe they have a lot of levies, but not as much men of arms. You can make less of your troops go in, and they will fight better early, and you can take out a lot of their number early in that battle because of combat width. Or you can keep your combat width, maybe you'll keep it very similarly, um, and... Um, they'll lose troops, but they'll still have more than you. But your quality will eventually win out or has the better chance in a, in a lower combat area to win out. If you have a larger army, you want that to be 100%. Like you're looking for areas where you can get your full army on the field or as many, the maximum amount of troops that you possibly can. Here, it doesn't really affect me. Now in the four phases, you've got the maneuver phase. Really, the maneuver phase is here's the advantage, okay? The initial advantage is minus eight because they have a better advantage than us, okay? It will add in these uh, into your advantage as well. So our friendly fatal casualties is negative 25%. So any armies that are in there that are friendly to him, they will have less casualties as a result. It also shows the modifiers, all right? So I have pikemen, so his horses are getting countered to my pikemen, so instead of getting that full damage, it's 91%. His skirmishers are getting countered by my bowmen, so he's not getting the full damage. And it's because I don't have all of them yet, like I only have 15. If I had 100, it would be almost totally countered, and he would have 0%. It would be like nothing. But same here, so I only deal 10% because of, I only have, I have 15 guys, and they're getting countered by the horsemen. My spearmen are countering their horsemen, and I'm my horsemen are fighting in favorable terrain. So that is the initial roll. So here in the maneuver phase, there will be an initial roll. Okay, so let's see this. Okay, here's the initial roll. We move to the early battle phase and they rolled. My guy rolled a three, okay. He rolled a zero. And so instead of that modifier still being negative eight, because initially it was 22 to 14, it went to a negative five because I got a three and he got a zero. And so I rolled better, so now I lost advantage. So how this works out, now that we're in the battle phase, how this works out is every advantage gives you plus 2% more damage. So let's say his total damage was like 10,000. When you add everything up, total damage is 10,000. Here, he, because he's a plus 5, that 10,000, he would get a 10% damage increase. So that 10,000 would become 11,000 damage from his troops. So you can see, as you would cause damage to people, it is massive. It is so helpful uh, to um to taking out armies like if you if you can have a, a quality commander that can roll really well you can do a lot of damage to opposing armies the other thing that i would show you is since we're into damage and toughness let's look at this levies get 10 damage and 10 toughness and that is per one so that is 19,910 damage and 19,910 toughness. And how this gets figured out is it's po every damage is 0.3 of damage. Uh, so basically it takes three damage to take away one toughness, okay? Three damage takes away one toughness. Toughness doesn't do anything but stop their guys from being slaughtered, okay? <laughs> the, the damage is what takes away the toughness. So in this case, you see this, when, we're, when we've got, th actually it shows it right here, they're getting 37 damage. So 37 damage, and you're looking at a levy, right? So 37 damage to a 10 toughness on a levy. Every one of my horsemen are taking out one levy every single day is basically what's happening with this. So we are going to take away 300 levies every single day but you have to remember they're countering their guys are doing the toughness and damage too one thing i would remind you is that 
Yes, it's a it's a video game. Yes, it's important to have large armies. Yes, it's important to have quality armies, but it really does come down to mathematics. Sometimes I think we forget that. And this it's really just when you add in all the math, what happens? And ultimately, when you have better units, you may not have as many, but if you have better units fighting on better territory for you with a combat wit that works for you, you will win because of the how the math works in the game. Champions are like gods, okay? They get 100 damage, and then they get t 10 toughness. So this guy by himself gets 140 damage, and uh, or sorry, 1,400 damage and 140 toughness. So 1,400 damage all by himself. And you have to remember how champions are viewed is you have the champion and then the, like the squires and the, the his like his guard around him. So it's not just him alone, but the, his quality is 1,400 and 140. So when you're adding up, so I have 300 horsemen doing 37 damage. So that's what, like 9,000 damage. But this one champion is is doing almost like 30% of that by himself. <laughs> and that's why it's so powerful to have these champions. And I have eight of them. Okay, and so 14, 13, 13, 11, 10, 10, 9. He has four at 10, 5, 4, 3. So you can see our champions are even absolutely incredibly stronger than theirs which alone is going to probably tip the scales of this battle so if you can get really powerful men at arms that work in the places that you're fighting if you can get a really good commander that starts off with a strong uh, advantage and you can have really good champions that have high prowess you will win a lot of battles so let's see how this plays out and how it finishes off pause so i'm going to speed it up a little bit just so we can see it there we go i'll let this one roll every three days you roll every three days you roll another die and we just saw there where my my guy sai wounded one of their champions okay and if you kill a champion they go from four to three and so they have even less all right so let's go again there's another die roll I would also say in this early battle phase, if you defeat the army, if you defeat the enemy's army in this early battle phase, you stack wipe them, okay? So it doesn't matter how many they have. If you have enough to wipe them out in this early battle phase, um, you uh, you completely wipe out their enti entire army. And uh, it lets you know in within three days, so another die roll, within three days, they'll be able to start this uh, retreat phase here this this third layer so let's see if he makes it okay so they made it to the late battle phase so either side can choose to retreat okay um, here I, we've routed 438 they've routed 230 of ours he's actually done pretty well because he is a good commander uh, we're just more powerful than he is you can see even his advantage right he started off with uh, plus eight on his side we start off with negative eight he's grown that to a negative 11 so he's doing a lot of damage because he's doing uh, he's getting a lot of good die rolls all right our champion maimed their champion so we've done that twice now so they're okay they have lost we should see this go into the uh, the retreat phase here. There's the retreat phase. So the winning side is cut down and the remaining uh, loser. So now they're trying to get out of here basically. And how this works is this is where whoop, you can see my Sahel horsemen have a 30 pursuit. So how this basically point uh, plays out is that as they're trying to retreat, I can pursue them. And for every pursuit point, I get 0.17 damage. So each Sahil horseman gets a 30 pursuit. So that would be what, like uh, almost right around, let's say half a point of damage uh, in my pursuit. Um, and so that would be 150 damage to the opposing army, all right? Extra, just as they're trying to get away. Now the screening, 
okay the screening blocks 0.33 damage so every point so basically it takes two points of pursuit to counter one point of screening all right so the Sahel horsemen are great for getting away and not losing a lot of guys I the let's so let's look at um, their guys so light footmen they're they have a 16 so I have a 30 and they have a 16 so my pursuit should counter their uh, screen just slightly but they they do have good screening I have more than they have which is why this is I'm gonna definitely get some of their guys um, but we'll see here so it just lets you know how many guys they're getting ready to, to lose from uh, from trying to just retreat simply retreat they're, they've lost the battle they're just trying to get out of there and you can see they've lost one they lost two they lost two more there they go so I I took care of them all right so now they are they're gonna run away or I guess it's not run away they're just defeated you'll see them you'll see this army just like go way over here you usually have to go you go about 10 baronies away and then they can get back into the fight so if you lose it doesn't mean you've lost the full thing you can come back and attack again if you want to you can go back into your territory and it'll build up your men again but you have to remember now now this is the siege is happening okay so let's let's go through the siege when you're in siege if you have a, a commander trait that has the siege tactic which i don't if you do it really shortens this siege so uh this siege event takes 20 days and and you go to another phase and there are several phases you have the garrison supplies phase you know you have the garrison health you have walls there's different phases that it keeps going through until finally you get 272 out of 272 siege progress now if you have onagers and which we don't but if you have like siege equipment you can break down the walls and if the walls are broken down you can click assault fort and you'll lose more guys doing this but you can also take something quicker and so it just depends do i need something more quickly or do i need more men to stay alive because i have more to go it's just you're you're deciding there this also down here this little tab shows your war score so right now we're at 13 percent all right and so you can make options we will eventually enforce demands we can't do it right now but we will eventually enf enforce our demands which is we want to own this all right so let's go through this i'm going to speed it up so we can just see it happen so you're going to see it go through 20 days and cycle and you're going to see that siege progress go up and he's coming back to attack me again all right so we're going to have another battle here we actually countered his advantage but it was zero by the time we were done with that one and we continue to siege you can also put your mouse pointer over this he's coming back again which it makes sense it's just, it's the only thing he owns like he's got nothing to lose by just continually attacking us There he comes again and you can see his numbers keep going down like because he, he's just losing people one more time this should be the last time getting close maybe he'll make all right we might be able to get a hundred percent before he attacks us so let's see if we can do that okay so you can see we took the siege now he's getting ready to attack us but we have a hundred percent war score so we can actually come in here and you just left click on that flag you come in it says we have a hundred percent so here's where we're going to gain the contested title we're going to gain 75 fame so we're going to get 75 prestige if we had allies with us they would share in that and the same for uh 
he's got to give up 75. So we just enforce our demands, left click. He gets that, so be it. Army's gone, because the, the, that war is over. And then you can disband your army. One thing I will say that I didn't say before is you have to declare the war before you can raise your army. If your army is raised, you cannot declare war. So make sure that you leave your army unraised, declare the war, then raise it. Okay. And what we're going to do here is we're going to grant this vassal and then move on to take some other places. But uh, we'll get into that next time. Hopefully you learned quite a bit here. I would also say on the rating side of things, I'll include this in the uh, link notes uh, in the video. But Mordred Viking does an incredibly good video on rating. So I didn't cover everything with it because he covers a lot of it. I just kind of focused on the attrition aspect because it's really important. So make sure you check that video out as well. Uh, thanks for checking this out. Hopefully it, it helped you learn how to play this game a little bit better. If you would like, subscribe, I'd appreciate it. Uh, look forward to seeing you next time.